No spiritual or moral authority. No spiritual or moral authority to say anything against that man. You get it? Why? I told myself in the back of my head, there's a reason why he anointed him, regardless of his witnesses. Not you. Okay? But those are just flyers. And now let's go to the real thing. Why submission? Ask yourself, why submission? Ask your neighbor, why submission? Why submission? Why submission? Why do you submit? Hallelujah. Why do you what? Submit. Everyone has their own reasons of what? Submission. But you, why do you? Submit. It's important to know why you, as an individual, what? Submit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Why do we submit? Let's read together. The Bible says, Submitting yourself to one another in the fear of God. That's why we submit to one another. Why do we submit to one another? Answer me. Why do you submit to one another? The fear of God. So any man who is not submitted does not fear God. Pastor Zach, amen. Any man who is not submitted does not what? Fear God. No man can tell you that they fear God and they don't submit to the man. That should sink in your head. No man who tells you they submit to God, fear God, sorry, can say, I fear God, and they do not submit to a man. They're lying. That's why we submit ourselves to one another in the fear of God. So I submit under Pastor Isaiah Mbuga because I fear God. King James Amplified. Of the same verse. Uh -huh. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ, the Messiah. So I wanted to use this word reverence because many people think fear, many people take that fear, that word fear, as the word fear, torment. Eh? No, 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 not I fear God, but I revere God. I respect God. I honor Christ. I honor Christ. And because I honor Christ, I submit myself to a man. Hallelujah. As I said, in future, I'm going to give you stories that will open your eyes. Or should I now? That's that I get from where I'm coming from. 1905. Evan Robert. Well. Are you hearing me? This young man was about 25 years of age. The Lord starts to use him so mightily. And when the Lord starts to use him so mightily, during that time, there is a black gentleman called William Seymour. He hears of the work the Lord was doing in the life of Evan Roberts. He hungered for a move of God in 1907. Praise the Lord. Why do we go back? The Bible says, remove not the ancient landmarks of your poor father. It means that when you are seeking to understand certain things in the gospel, understand what happened before. You'll have a very clear picture of what happened will happen later. A lot of Christians are where they are because they don't have a simple grain of church history. If you take them to church history, they do not know anything about church history. But I'll help you. Okay? Because for me, when the Lord separated me at campus, he told me one thing, understand church history. I, have, I studied intently church history for eight years. Get any book from the line of a Frank Battleman to the Diadons, I know every single one that is on the net to buy of church history. I needed to find a certain ground 
Because I tell people from 2 AD, the mountain is a little bit of Phrygia, to the Antinese, to Constantine, into Augustus. I know all of Moravian, first great icon, second great icon, one for faith, charismatic, full gospel, four square, alien. I know, I know up to the Holy Ghost movement, 1992. I can read for you a line of men and tell you why this failed and why that not failed. I did not want to use a line that was biased. I just wanted to understand a certain pattern of why certain men were a success and certain men were not a success in the gospel. Yet all these men had gifts. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Because it's true that your gift shall make a way, but it shall not sustain your ministry. They get it wrong. It makes a way. It can put you before 10,000, but it won't sustain the 10,000. Are you hearing me? So that's why ministry now goes beyond just us having a crusade of 10,000 people. But if the Lord has entrusted me with people, then I must understand exactly how these things work. And there's a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. And I know by the time I finish here, many of you are going to start comparing a lot of things and you're going to explain why many churches are failing. Many ministries are failing. You get it? Why many people, I am sure, are going to die and they're not going to have anybody to get in their shoes. There are many men, there are generals in this nation. If they die, their ministries will end there. You get it? So I'm saying, when William Taylor hears what is happening in the world, he seeks the Lord for so long. In fact, his wife got filled with the Holy Spirit way earlier than him. She started functioning in the gifts of the Spirit. She now later the Lord anoints this gentleman at uh, Azusa Street. Some of you have read about it. But I want to take a certain direction of Azusa. I read a certain book by a gentleman called Frank Battleman. And my eyes were open to exactly the spiritual condition that was in Azusa. Up to today, the Azusa Street Revival has the biggest followers. If we were to go through the lines of the gospel, even the East African Revival, Edward Joe Church, you understand? When you go two generations from him, you realize he's a recipient of Azusa. You get it? But everything that was in Azusa is in present day church. And I'm going to explain that in the leadership forum. Okay? So William Seymour sought the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord was poured out so heavily on William Seymour. I choose to begin from there. I don't want to go back, but I may go back if you want. So when the man is filled with the Holy Spirit, the power of God visits the whole area in the city. And they will tell you that this guy would stand behind stacks of boxes and pray. And the power of the Holy Ghost hits men kilometers and miles away because of the anointing that was upon his life. But besides that, William Seymour devoted a certain spirit. He did not submit himself to any man. And therefore, there is a judgment on any man who is not submitted. Why? Because the whole line of weight is on one side. You don't fear God. We submit ourselves to each other, like Ephesians 5.1 has said, in the fear of God. You get it? So, a man cannot say that because or rather, a man cannot say, I fear God, when they are not submitted. Submitting yourself to one another in the fear of God. Ignorantly or intentionally, this man did not fear God. I'll give an example. When he started to err in the scriptures later on, the first guy called Charles Fahim, I don't know whether some of you know him, he's called the grandfather of Pentecostalism. Charles Fahim functioned way earlier than William Seymour. And Charles Fahim did, a, that's why they call him the grandfather of Pentecost. You get it? So take a council city, about 1901. He was a star. This was about five years, or seven, six or seven years, after the shining of William, before the shining of William Seymour, Charles Parham was online. You understand? He used to read the Bible and pray for three hours every day. Okay? The Lord did very great things about it. But later on, him being the spiritual father to William Seymour, finds William Seymour also now coming in the line of growing up as a minister of the gospel. William Seymour understood a certain direction of the word that was wrong. So Charles Parham comes to William Seymour and tells him, William Seymour, you're preaching this, but as your father, I feel it's wrong. Let's sit down and talk about it. 
William Seymour said no. He locked his spiritual father up. During that time, there was a woman he looked at as a spiritual mother, Maria Woodward Eckhart. You understand? The brainchild of the holiness movement. It will surprise you that when you read the holiness movement, it was a great ministry. It wasn't a legal ministry. But today, when people talk about holiness movement, many people have inclined to a legal perspective. But she always inclined to a great perspective. Roman 6.22, it was a fruit. Hallelujah. She comes to William Seymour again and talks to him about this particular issue. Same spirit, he still locked her up. He had a policy called locking up, and that policy was anybody who came to correct him of what he thought was wrong, praise the Lord. Anybody who came in his life to help him, tell him that every, whatever he was doing was wrong, he always locked them up. He had a lockout policy. William Simon got to the point where he became so big for any man in the world that everybody started to get his attention. You get it? It became one of the biggest movements in the United States of America. But William Seymour was orphaned. Are you hearing me? And sometimes when this pump comes in, we start to become a bit more proud than we should. You get where I'm coming from? Because the Lord has given us too much. Yeah? But William Seymour's level of pride was not a line of pride out of knowledge. It was a level of pride out of ignorance. When the Lord is dealing with a servant who is proud by knowledge, you realize he deals with him differently. Like Paul says, and to keep me from getting puffed up because of the abundance of revelation. William Seymour was not afflicted because of the abundance of revelation. William Seymour was afflicted because of ignorance. Get it? William Seymour refused to listen to any authority. He locked up any man that wanted to correct him. I can go in the doctrinal lines, one of the things William Seymour believed. He, was, he had a very legalistic understanding of salvation. That he would almost want to cause a man to get born again and again if they had made a sin that day. You get that kind of understanding. Something that later reflects in the spirit of William Brennan. And please try to understand, I speak about this general only for learning reasons, not criticism. We celebrate them in a certain forum, okay? And, and I'm speaking to leaders here. I'm not speaking to babies. You get on trying to tell you. So, William Seymour locked up his spiritual father. He continued in his ministry. And the very spirit of rebellion that was working on William Seymour was produced by his own spiritual son, whom he raised. And one time his spiritual son comes to him and tells him, Daddy, what you're preaching is wrong. And William Seymour wanted to lock the boy out. And the boy left ministry. 98% of the ministry went with the spiritual son. William Seymour, one of the greatest movers of the world, died with less, almost less than 20 members in church, and he died on a pulpit. He stood to preach, and he died on a pulpit. He, uh, he had a very pathetic end. I wish he listened. But how can he listen if he does not submit himself to another man? And if he does not submit himself to another man, how can he claim to fear God? You get what I'm trying to tell you? So any man who is not submitted does not fear God. Hallelujah. Same thing with Charles Parham. I'm sorry, William Burnham. Same spirit. He refused to listen to his administra administrator called Gordon Lindsay. Two times the guy warned him of his death because of what he was preaching. The guy said, no, I just love preaching. You can't stop me. And just one young prophet, Kenneth Lee Hagen, judges the guy. One day, the same date and time, the guy prophesied the same date and time William Branham went home. Yet he was one of the greatest prophets that ever lived on the surface of this earth. But by the time William Branham went home, his prophecies were not scripture anymore. And it's a harder paper when a man hears God. They are very hard to teach. Because the thing tells them they can only hear God. And many of them go past the balances of the word and they forget that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. So what they prophesy is not consonant to the word, but they don't need the balances. Why? Because they can't submit to anyone who should balance them at the point when they are flying so higher than everyone. Because they confuse the gift with maturity. Maturity and gifting are two different things and never confuse them. The fact that you've started hearing in the spirit does not make you deeper than Pastor Isaiah. You get what I'm trying to tell you? 
The fact that you can articulate no mystery does not mean that you're greater than your master. For you should never forget that there was a time you could not even open your mouth. And the man put the first things of the principles of the oracle. Then you went to the secondary and third by reason of your adoption. But you never forget who told you. And I'll come on that later. Praise the Lord. Then we devote to another group of people who said, For me, I submit under the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, He shall teach me all things and remind me that which I have forgotten. And therefore, me, I don't submit to any man of God. I submit only to the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians 8, 5. He says, They firstly gave themselves unto the Lord and unto us by the will of God. They gave themselves to God, and when they gave themselves to God, God willed that they give themselves to men. So what do you mean by you being led by the Holy Spirit and no man? This was not the will of those men. This was the will of God that they give themselves to men. So God is saying, because you have submitted wholly to me, I hand you over to Pastor Isaiah. Because you have said you're submitting wholly to me, I hand you over to Pastor Zach. I hand you over because you have submitted. You're saying you're fully yielded to me. Therefore, by my will, I submit you to a man. You get what I'm trying to tell you? So if a man says that I cannot submit to a man, that man is not even fully submitted to God. Again, that's why it takes you back to Ephesians 5.21. That submitting ourselves to one another in the fear of of God, in the reverence, amplified says, of Christ. That respect and honor that there is a Christ that I honor, I must submit myself unto. Amen. Hallelujah. But we have a generation of guys who are too, too excited to submit to any man. They're too excited to submit to any man. Why? Because they speak in their head. They only have the Holy Spirit. They say, the Bible says that we shall be led by the Holy Spirit, not the name of God. And I want to correct you. The Spirit dwells in man. He doesn't dwell in your shoes. He dwells in man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the most star fact comes in, Hebrews 13, 17. Two things. No man watches over themselves, and no man directly accounts to God for himself. Never forget that. No man directly watches over himself, himself, and no man directly accounts to God. It's the scripture, it's not me. He says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. There are some people who are not profiting, not because they don't go on prayer mountains. There are some people who are not profiting, not because they don't pray and fast. There are some people who are not profiting, not because they don't love God, but they're not profiting because they're not obedient to who should watch over their souls and should give account for them. They want to account for themselves, and they want to watch for their souls. And consequently, judgment falls on them. And they stop to profit. And the person who doesn't have a spiritual father comes to you funnily and asks you, why is my business failing? Why is my relationship failing? Why is my education failing? I've done everything I must do, but I've realized it's failing. Why is it failing? You're asking why it's failing when you don't have a spiritual authority. Ask me when you have, or go ask your father. But you're asking me why you're failing, why you're not profiting. When probably you grief the only man who had to watch over you, or the only woman who had to watch over you. Hallelujah. That is not so. That is not so. So there are many people who are truly afflicted because they don't even submit the right way. But you can never correct certain people. And let me teach you this as a leader. There are certain people you will never put in your line. Better it in your head. They will understand later. And they can only understand by a certain chastisement, by a certain judgment upon them. Until that judgment comes, they will never see you in a certain light. Just keep on moving with those who respond. Because you might die trying to restore people who might never see you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
So we're at a place where we understand, I must understand that he watches for my soul as one who must give account for me. There are certain things God will never ask me when Pastor Israel is still alive. And I am sure I like it that way. You get it? There's certain things he will never ask me when. There's certain things he might not or will not ask him when I'm around. He will ask me. Therefore, he owes me a certain kind of uh, explanation. On that level, he owes me a certain kind of explanation. On that level, I owe Pastor a certain kind of explanation. Why? Because when I give myself wholly to God, God wills that I should give my life to a man. Because God wills. And that's the place called maturity. For the Bible says in the book of John that when you were young, you went when you willed. Nobody determined how you eat. Nobody determined how you sleep. Nobody determined how you dress. Nobody determined why you want to pray. If you wake up in the morning today and you say, I'm going to pray for this church. Then tomorrow morning you wake up and say, I'm going to worship here. Then the other day you wake up and say, I'm going to worship there. Nobody, I mean nobody, can slow you from that. Why? Because you were not submitted. But as you continue to give yourself wholly to God, as you continue to grow, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou guardest thyself and walkest with as thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch thine hands, and another shall guard thee, and carry thee with as thou wouldest not. They don't take us where we want to go. Settle it in your head. I don't like certain things he says. He doesn't always have to say everything I want, but he must say what he must say because he guards my hands now. I'm not of my own. Sometimes I don't want to do certain things, but he says I want you to do them. And sometimes I'm torn between as of to stay young and go where I will or to grow and mature and do what he wants me to do. Because the highest place of maturity is submitting your hands to another man. Hands means service. That means that my hands are available for labor, but I cannot determine where my labors go. Even though I feel I'm led of the Holy Spirit, he wills that I should be led through him. He wasn't stupid. God was not stupid. He wasn't stupid. Hallelujah. God was not stupid. If your father does not agree with something, don't do it. Let the Lord judge him. You don't have judgment for what he has refused you to do. Now we have a generation of old prophets, young prophets, like the Old Testament dispensation. But you must understand, this story is different from submission because the young prophet was not submitted to the old prophet. But if he was submitted to the old prophet, the principle of judgment would not have fallen on him. You get what I'm coming from? You understand the, the balances under which we want to bring a certain line of sanity in the gospel. Are we together? So at the end of the day, it's a place of maturity. Second Dr. John says. Give me the amplified. Amplified Bible. I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, when you were young, you guarded yourself. You put on your own belt and girdle, and you walked about wherever you pleased to go. You pleased to go. You just wanted. I, I, I feel like praying. I feel like not going to church today. And then you ask a person, why didn't you attend service? And then they say, honestly, I don't have a reason. Honestly. I don't have a reason. Ha. You like it when you're quiet? But when you grow up, you will stretch on your hands and someone else will put a girdle around you and carry you where you do not wish to go. Now the place is when they started to put places if they took us where we wished to go, it was wonderful. But there was a point where they didn't wish us to go. I mean, we didn't wish, wish to go. We didn't want to go to certain places, but they pushed us there. That's a place where you suppress your vision above another man's vision. And when you're seated under that man, you can only build his vision. You can't build upon his vision. You get it? You can't take advantage of the authority he delegates to you to build your own ministry. 
because you attract judgment and destruction. And many men have started ministry on that title. But on the face, they put on something, la la la, international ministry. But behind, if you read in the spirit, you actually read rebellious spirit, international <laughs> ministry. And then you enter a ministry, nation shakers, but the church itself is like this. And <laughs> the wind is shaking your church. But you're saying you're shaking it. <laughs> Who is bigger? Hallelujah. But many of these men, when you go deep inside their ministry, you realize there was rebellious ministry internationally. But on top it is halalala ministry. They even get Greek words, shalom international. Hebrew, you get it? But it doesn't matter how much you face it. The underlying place is, is the man submitted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the way, I'm about to go deep. So if, this, this, if you have understood this, allow me to go a bit deeper. Praise the Lord. When he says these men, who take us where we wish we do not go? The question now goes to God is, why does he take me where I wish not to go? And this is why he takes you where you wish not to go. You're still dealing with your wish. You're not totally surrendered to God's will. You're still dealing on the business of your wish. You still have wish in your heart. You get it? And the consequence of wish is that it frustrates true potential because it causes men to land on wrong opportunities. And they never know that they've landed on wrong opportunities. A guy gets too excited because the door has opened to him and he doesn't know that not every door that is open is yours. And every time they call him, he says, the Lord is using you. Listen, you can be so used of men that one time you wake up and realize that your whole CV is full of men using you and God has never used you one bit. Because I'll tell you, God is not going to use you out of the pattern. He will use you in the pattern. He will use you in the pattern. If you know Timothy very well, you'll understand the Bible says, For I know how you understood the scriptures from when you were a child. He spoke of the faith and the testimony of Timothy's grandmother and mother. But Timothy doesn't use the basis of having known the word from his grandmother and his, his mother. And then consequently the things that he knew since he was a child to claim that he knew God more than the Paul who had just stumbled on God later on in life after the Lord has a very dramatic conversion on his way to Damascus. You get it? Paul knew that. But there was a point what Timothy knew was not enough to qualify him as a minister. Hallelujah. Even the mighty man, the Bible calls him <laughs> servant in the spirit, mighty one. Do you realize that Apollos later submitted to Paul? Do you realize that Luke, Luke, the guy who writes the Testament, later submitted to Paul? Do you know that John later submitted to Paul? Who of those walked with our Lord? So is it a place of experience? That because you have known God for so long, therefore you should submit to a guy because he has been longer. Who of those two really walked with our Lord? But how be it that they all submitted to Paul? Even Peter gave reverence to Paul. Yet Paul came later, one bone after time. Do you understand what I'm coming from? Because the growing of the spirit, the increase of God, has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with the substance. If you don't approve a man's substance by reason of your carnal sense, it does not disqualify the authority he has over God. And I want to teach you something. Take heed when you sense something on a man that is too unique to be ministered to him by his mind. Because that's the true ministry of apostleship. Not just the apostolic office, but that's the true ministry of apostleship. Because that is what causes obedience to the nation. You get what I'm trying to tell you? There is something that the Lord contributes in the life of a man that even causes God to, to quail we have a man. Some of you might not understand what I'm saying. Well, wait, 
nga chisobelo kuwa kumuntu ngane katonda yebu yomuntu some of you might never understand it until you read the scripture he says how shall i hide this from abraham knowing that he possesses a great it shall be a great and mighty nation how can i hide it from him now you know he's going to be great if god can't hide the secret from abraham because because he knows he's going to be great if God can't hide a secret, and the only reason he can't hide it is because he knows greatness on the man. The giftings and callings of God are without dependence. The Bible says he honors his servant. He honors. He honors. Do you know the meaning of honor? He rewards. God respects his servant. So it's a little thing for you to tell you, please respect Pastor Isaiah. God honors. He honors. He anointed Abraham. He owned Abraham. But at a particular point, he should be higher than Abraham to determine what he wants. But he looks at the weight on Abraham and tells him, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing that he shall be a great and mighty nation. How can I hide this? Knowing that he shall be a great and mighty nation. Now, what level are you to hide from Abraham? What the Lord can't hide. What level? And the Lord said, Shall I hide this from Abraham? Which I sorry. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Can I? This is God's thing. This is guys to be to hide certain things out of him. The Lord submitted his plan. To Abraham. The Lord Jehovah submitted his plan to Abraham. His plan to Abraham. His plan to a soulish realm that knoweth not the mind. Yet he's supposed to be God. And he could have done well to keep it. You get what I'm coming from? Now, if the Lord honors Abraham that much, how much more the Lord? The men the Lord sets in your life. As I said, unless the man is nothing. But if you see that a man has something unique about him, honor him and respect him. Don't submit under one you can't respect. But once you submit to that man and you see there is something unique about them, it's the quickest way for them to transpire. It's the quickest way for them to transpire by reason of submission. Reason of submission. Very simple. Elijah and Elisha experience is explained. But like Elijah and Elisha, the Bible says when Elijah cuts the mantle, and he says, Elijah tells him, let me go say bye to my father. I want to kiss him. And that's when Elijah tells him, you know not what was done to you. Some people don't know what was done to them. Some people don't know what was done to them when they submitted under certain men. You must understand that this man was coming from a place eh, where the, he was sure there was no prophet in Israel. He was sure. And the Lord told him there are 7,000 fellows that have not bowed. And Elisha was among them. There was a keeping that was so unique on the life of Elisha. You get it? And when he comes out of that, that's the first time his eyes actually open that Elisha is actually something. That means there was a time Elisha was a prophet and Elijah never saw him. But he has seen it. And when he sees it, because Elijah is a chariot of Israel, the moment he casts his mantle on him, he's saying, I am to pass a chariot thing on you. There's something on me, I am to pass on me. And the guy says, let me go kiss my mother and father. Why? Because he doesn't understand that at that particular point he has switched submission. So now the man of wisdom will use a sarcastic statement and tell you go. He can come and ask me, Papa, can I go and preach? And in my head I realize, if he goes back to two sermons ago, I taught him how, when to hear, and when not to hear. And I'm thinking on this sermon he should have understood. But I realize he doesn't. Not because he doesn't understand. Some of them have a spirit of balance for the love of money. God tells him, don't cast his well, but he still wants to go. Balaam cannot settle until he gets there. 
when that spirit is on a man, even what seems obvious, he will ask. Not because he's submitted, but he's manipulating your spirit to say yes. Elisha must have known. That's why when this man tells him, go, for thou knowest not what was done to you, why did you turn and follow him? He knew. He knew. Why? Because this we're dealing with men of the spirit. This, this, were, kind of, this were men with soul. But here we're dealing with men of the spirit. You get it? So some of people say, ah, Papa, this is the guy I want to marry. But I remember we have drawn balances on how you should marry. We don't control you, remember. But there are certain things that are scriptural and report over the years of which marriage you have to take in. But if you make a decision and I realize you're insisting, and I realize it's a balanced spirit on you, I will not push you to a place of thinking that will force you to do what you don't want to do. No, I let you go your way and you are one. I am sure a certain grace will preserve you enough not to die. But you'll come back one day. Yeah. That's why we, that's why the Bible says, considering the end of a man's conversation. Very important. When you submit to a spiritual authority, always consider the end of their conversation. Don't make them repeat words twice. I said something last year. I don't expect you to ask me in the same perspective unless you didn't understand. It is a hard paper for you. Ask me from the sermon, not from the experience surrounding you. Sit ages. No, 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 no. Has to get to a place of maturity. But certain people don't know what was done and to them. And that's when I realized one thing. But maybe, just maybe, you don't cut to their spirit like you think, man of God. But you are pushing and beating, sorry, and 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 and, 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 and in their life, a place where they did not permit you to go. Some people submitted for status quo fashion. Hey, this guy submitted. Ah, even you, I'm going to submit. Who do you think I should submit to? Who is easier? Apostle Grace. Ah, let me go to pray. Apostle Grace. Who is fatter? Who is bigger? Just as he looks a bit mature, he's married. Ah, let me speak better English. Bishop Floyd Makaida. Bishop Floyd Makaida. Well, you get it? We use the outside to judge what's inside. You get it? And then tomorrow someone realizes, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's a lot. But the issue was, they misunderstood the whole concept of submission. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, know what was done to you. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, there comes a young line, a very important line here. Huh? At that particular point, when a minister should be sarcastic, huh? you ought to know his spirit or not, to know that he is. And I'll tell you the truth. If he's your father, you will know. Because Pastor Isaiah can't look at Danny doing anything wrong, and Danny doesn't know that Daddy is gifted. But you must understand that the genesis of Danny's relationship with his father is that Danny did not choose his father. No man chooses their father. But in heart of Christ, also fathers don't choose children. So if any man of God ever comes and tells you I'm your spiritual father, understand he has floated the principles of this ministry. We don't rub ourselves on men. Not because we might not know our sons and daughters, but because sometimes, sometimes, there are things that will happen in those people's lives and they'll say, he said it, I didn't say it. He's the one who said it, I didn't say it. He increased himself. Why? Because we are living in a situation, in an environment where men like controlling people. You get it? And certain people might never understand love from control. You get it? So at the end of the day, anything happens, the person says, no, he controlled me. I didn't want it. And then they ask the man of God, did, they, did you tell them or they're the ones who told you? And the man of God says, no, I'm the one who told them because the Lord told me. It's like the same thing I see with certain ministers. Listen. If the Lord has said that he's going to build me a house, I would rather he tells him, not me. That's the order of the rank. The children possess the gifts, not the fathers. You get it? But I've seen ministries where a man of God comes and tells him, the Lord has told me that you should buy me a car. Heart of Christ, you don't do that no thing. Let him tell the man. 
If he never tells the man, let it suffice that God never spoke. Why? Because by the testimony of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Who is your witness? Let them be the first testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then that's when now the Christian learns to understand that your life starts to profit. So some people who you don't see profiting, many of them, their lines are established. That's why I tell people, if you see a person who keeps coming in, question their submission. If you see a minister whose church has failed to grow, question their submission. It has nothing to do with the area. Nothing. Why? Because he says he will bless you in the village, he will bless you in the country. He says he will bless you going in, he says he will bless you going out. He says and that his word shall be established and it shall, it, it shall, what does he say? The word shall accomplish in the thing that he shall send it. It shall prosper in the thing that he sent it. There is no way the word of God cannot prosper in the thing, thing that he sends it. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. There was a young man one time who sent, who one time the Lord, he said, he said, I'm submitted to us for grace. Moved on, and one time I sent him a text message. I told him, brother, I see a certain direction you're taking, but the Lord tells me to warn you. And then he sat in a council of men and said, and I looked at an guy of Gera, the Motalani way. And guess what? I heard it from my head, my end. I heard like he said that word in the spirit. And the Lord told me, what? And a few days later, somebody in the same meeting comes and tells me, where's our post? Somebody said this, but it wasn't nice. When I heard it, I said, don't worry, I've known that for days. Give it two weeks. Two weeks, he landed in something that up to today he has failed to come out of. Up to today, he has failed to come out of. I watched him move this world. I'm waiting for him to come and save God. You get it? I don't wish that he falls there, but he will not profit. I am sure. He will not profit. I am sure. I don't want him to be that way. You get it? Another guy used to be a prophet. Some of you have not had this story. I'll tell you. He used to be a prophet in Mokono. Very big prophet. First guy there picked this boy on the street. He was doing nothing. He was on nothing. Pastor Isaiah picks this guy up, starts to make him clash. Why? Because the primary lines of hearing God is listening to your spiritual father send you for television, eh, batteries, and, and, and shoes in the market. You understand? The true lines of submission really are not the Lord has told me to send you to Uganda. No, 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 no. Our primary places of trust in you are to tell you to go and buy me. Come here, time I'll refund your money or I, I send you for it. It's just a text. Is it? This guy starts to flash around, becomes part of the family, and next thing I know, this guy is prophet time. I mean, phone numbers, number plates, what you ate last week, left today. Some of these prophets I see on television, they couldn't match this young guy. They couldn't. I'm telling you the truth. You know, when you say prophets, you've seen levels of prophets. You get it? So one time we were moving, and the Lord tells me, Muse, I tell you, Muse, I feel this guy is about to hit shipwreck. I didn't first see him do anything. But you can sense a rebellious spirit. Why? Because when they are ministering, they don't minister from a pure spirit. You sense strife and contention in their heart. It doesn't matter how wonderful the gifting is. It leaves a certain smell and taste in the spirit of a man who knows the true smell and taste of the weight of God's glory established in love. You can tell the difference. But again, you're, telling, you're talking to men who don't even know the difference. What do you want to say again? Nobody my puta my puta, but it's like it's every man, man, every more, more. You get where I'm coming from? So I tell Pastor Isaiah, I feel this guy is gonna lose it. Pastor Isaiah told me, and the guy's father, I can tell you one thing. I have talked to him for one month. I realized he's not gonna hear. So we talked about it, and then he went. Then the second time, I went to Pastor Isaiah and told him, but Mose, this guy needs teaching. Pastor Isaiah told me, I have tried to teach him, he has failed. Third time, Pastor Isaiah tells me, I have released this guy. I told Pastor Isaiah, this guy is going to run mad. If you release him, 
and that's exactly what happened after one month of that conversation twali kubiri aonga twambuka bwe tujana mulaga we never forget that day that guy ran mad we looked for him we found him on the street in gayaza with wet pants he was eating grass you understand mad he had wetted his pants he had been mad for two weeks we took him in a room and restored him that's when i understood the feeling of submission how a man that deep could chew card like an animal i never thought that thing would happen because he he seemed too deep to lose it so that's why when we get to the lines of accountability you understand and responding to submission listen the gift should not move a man to the thought that he's wrong never think that your gift in wrong to you no 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 your submission wrong to you the submitted hand wrong to you not your gift not your gift I'll give you an example. There are men right now who are not preaching on our pulpit. Eh? There are men right now who are not preaching on our pulpit. But if we wanted to both leave this nation, we would think about them first. You get it? Because there's a place where seven men have served and have submitted. You see, many people actually think when I entered Pastor Israel's life, I just started serving. I just entered war and then I started preaching. I became deep. No. No. He's my witness. I served Pastor Isaiah from campus. I served. There's no hard moment when I couldn't talk and only Elder Chibirige could talk. Elder Fred could talk and Pastor Isaiah. Only those four and his wife five. Those three. Five, four, five, yeah. Pastor Isaiah, his wife, Elder Chibirige, uh, this gentleman, Fred, the administrator, the man of God, I mean, I Israel, I was a deeper preacher than me, but I do remember. But he's my witness. I have never come to pastor Isaiah one day, and I told him, I feel there's a revelation that the Lord has placed upon my heart. <laughs> I used to refuse to preach. I feared his pulpit for how many years, sir? I could not preach on his pulpit for two years. You get what I'm coming from? Not because I didn't have this key. Nada, take me out in Kawente. I was already somewhere. Flying 250 members, another one had 80 members, and they were chartered. And they were established. And they had chairs, they had machines. They could remember. We didn't come to submit because the world had beaten us. You get it? And the standard of that was not what the man had. At that particular point, the standard was we were looking for a father. You see, the Bible says many of you had many instructors in the Lord, but a few fathers. Some people submitted to instructors. And when these instructors get in hard lines, what system cannot sustain the life of this man? He cannot sustain the life of this man. So that's why many Christians cannot what? Prophet. And when the Lord now removes your hands, when he gives these hands to you, and he says you shall give them to another man to gather them, do you realize that the hands are not only the things that labor to work, but the results of your labors also? So you understand first truth now? You understand Christ now? And he can tell you ever since I started submitting to him, I've never floated any principle financially. He's my witness. There is no day I ever told him I'm not safe, and there is no day he will ever observe. He has the right to ask me, why did you keep tight? He has it, but I can't allow him. That's what he says, Galatians 6, 6. He says, for you who are to communicate to him that teaches in all, not a few, all. He says, let him that is faith in the wise communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. If a man is your teacher, he's your spiritual father, you must learn to communicate to him in all good things. Because at a particular level, he faces for your, for your age. When you grow and mature, there are certain things he should not be facing. 
and you start to communicate. For example, there are certain things I can't allow Pastor Isaiah to do anymore. There are certain things I can't allow Pastor Isaiah to buy anymore. There are certain things I can't allow Pastor Isaiah to touch anymore. Not to anything. I am mature enough. Even in this physical world, there are things my father does not do because I'm old. There are things my father cannot spend on because I'm old. He educated me. So, but at this level, if a man has not yet learned the communication, we will understand they're a baby. We will feed them long enough. But if they feed you for four, five years, six years, and you still can't type your bed, Pastor Isaiah, you're humble. I will never allow a man who does not type to sit on my pulpit. I will never. I will never. You are humble. Me, I will never. Because that's the, that's the primary testimony of the gospel. That's the primary testimony of the gospel. What graduates you to know you're mature? You get it? You understand? I can't go in my father's house and be comfortable now. There was a time I was comfortable. In my father's house, I could open the fridge and be okay. But now I can't enter my father's house and be comfortable now. You get it? And see him send the maid for milk and I have money. I feel uncomfortable driving home without something in my car. Not because my father is poor, but he's my biological father. How much more your spiritual father? You get what I'm going to say? So the levels of maturity are not depths of knowledge. No. They're the responses of a man who has understood. They're the responses of a man who has what? Who has understood. Now when a man understands that, you realize that even the normal things eh, of submission, the primary lines of submission, now will come on and start to shed even on other people. For example, there is a point where Timothy pushes it. I think it's Timothy. No, it's Peter. Um, chapter 5, verse 5, 6. He speaks of the submission to elders. The elder. Let the younger one. Eh? Likewise, you younger. The Bible says, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yeah, of all of you, be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. After you've understood this principle of your father and the communication line, you ought to now also know who is old among you. Who is old among you? Who is old among you? That now I've entered another point. Who is old among you? I've understood he's my spiritual father, but he's still the only person I owe a certain line of humility and accountability. Who is old among you? Who is old among you? And when it comes to heart of Christ, we do both for age and spirit. You can't speak to Rose, the lady who ushers a church like she's your age mate. You understand? You cannot speak to them like she's your age mate. In fact, I would even be more disappointed if it's a minister who spoke to her. Because by reason of age, she's already older than you. So we do it in three areas. One, the age someone has spent on us. Two, the age someone has spent in salvation. And three, their spiritual level. If you want to respect her for her age in the world, respect her for her age in the gospel. If you want to respect her for her age in the gospel, respect her for the spirit in her. If she's spiritual. Those are three fronts. You have two Some of you, when you get to meet me, you realize you're looking at your husband and say, I'm their pastor. I am their pastor. Do you know that? I am, they say, I'm their pastor. And that's true. I am their pastor. The Bukenians, I'm their pastor. But I address her as Mama Bukenia. Why do I call her Mama? Why do I go in a meeting with her and I don't say, This is my daughter, oh God? Do you understand what I'm coming from? Do you see what I'm coming from? You see what I'm telling you? If he's older than me, even though he's submitted to the ministry, if Pastor Francis is a bit older than me, I owe him a certain humility when I'm addressing him. For the sake of the gospel. But some of you don't respect men at any front. If some Christian opens their mouth and says something, and you look at the Christian and ask yourself, 
was she washed? I mean by soap in the mouth. Was she washed? Was she washed? You get it? So more than just understanding him from there, I also must understand the people he honors. I honor every man my father honors. And I hate every man my father hates. I'm sorry, I also have that experience. You get it? So it's bad, but that's me. If my father doesn't like you, even if you're the best preacher, I'm already biased by reason of being his son. I'm sorry, I can't like what he doesn't like. You get what I'm trying to say? Why? Because it's a place of submission. So you honor people of their level of spirituality, of their age, and probably the time they spent in the gospel. That's why Paul could honor Peter. Not necessarily because Peter was big, but because Peter knew the Lord before. That's why he went to submit his ministry to Peter and James. Then it was said, but Paul never submitted to anyone. You never read the Bible. When he left Arabia and spent three years in Damascus, what did he do? He went to Jerusalem. Who are the first two people he spoke to? James and Peter. Peter for 15 years. 15 days, sorry. And then James later. Why? Because he was the chief apostle. And Peter also refers him to James because he says, no, speak to the state man of the house. Yet it looks obvious that Peter should have been the state man of the house because the word spoken was, on this rock shall I build. We expected Peter to be the chief apostle of the Jerusalem church. But the election favored him not. And he settled for it. So when a man has Jezebel, he will never settle in a place that does not give him position. That's when you know the spirit of Jezebel. He will never settle in a place that doesn't give him position. You understand? He will never settle in a place that doesn't give him position. Hallelujah. Yet the very spirit shuns function. So they are more attached to position than function. They are more attached to being called Papa Mama than what they can produce for the Papa ship and Mama ship. That's why I refuse positions in campus. I always refuse. I always refuse certain positions. Not because I didn't want them, but I was more zealous for function. More zealous for function. Be more zealous for the results you produce. Before you know it, you'll up, be up there. Don't be zealous for position. You don't need to sit in front and be addressed by a certain guy and be given G for you to know your deep. Because there are many people who give Jews, but we minister comfort. I'm telling you the truth. You see, Pastor Israel, I've gotten to maturity, but can I even submit myself to a man if the Lord tells me that's the only way I can help him? And me and Pastor Israel do that a lot. There are some people we bless and put on platform, not because they are deep, but because that's the only way we can minister to them. Even if you don't understand, the projector will understand. <laughs> you get what I'm coming from? Not because the guy is deep. But sometimes Pastor Isaiah can come and tell me, you know what, Pastor, this guy needs help. And you say, how can we help him? And Pastor Isaiah says, ah, if he doesn't get a pulpit, he will not be okay. We give him a pulpit, he preaches, we sit back and say, amen. But indeed, in our hearts, now we are talking to you guys. In our hearts, he cannot add on what you know. You get it? But why do we even respect those men and give them honor and place in our lives? Because for some men, that's the only way you will minister to them. You will never minister to them unless you listen to them first. That's the only way they will listen to you. And some even after that, they move out because they are running for a meeting. Now, leaders, I'm sorry, it's a bit hard, eh? but I also must keep that in. Because I'm speaking to leaders, I'm not speaking to laymen. In the same breath, there are certain people in this life you will give honor. Not because they can add up to you, but because that's the only way you'll ever add up to them. That's the only way you'll ever add up to them. When Paul abuses the high priest and they smack his face, he had a right to say three years. Because the mystery was not on the priest. Or when they tell him, don't you know it is written? And he says, oh, I'm sorry. I should not have. For it is written that you cannot what? Ascend the high priest. He repented. Yet he was the right one. And he was the apostle of the movement. 
that that particular point, the only comfort for anything to go a bit further was Paul to first start being wrong, yet being right, or rather true. So that kind of humility will cause you to sit down with a person over lunch, and they speak nonsense, and you act like they're speaking wisdom. But in actual sense, they're speaking nonsense. Why? Because that's the only way you can help them. That's the only way you'll ever minister to them. There's some men whose meetings we've entered, not because we went to add on anything to us, but the spirit of leadership causes you to go for the man's meeting. Sometimes not because what he's going to say is good, but because that's the only way to minister comfort to that man's spirit. The Bible says that we comfort with the very comfort that Christ has comforted us with. Jesus also sat in our kind of meeting. While we were yet kind of, he appeared and he demonstrated another kind. So that's what teaches me. You can't say that me, I can only listen to people of my level and above. No, sometimes you must listen to people below you for the sake of raising them. They might never even understand it. They might think they were deeper. That's okay. You played your part in their life. Move on. Thank the Lord that you did. Hallelujah. Just bless the Lord that you did. Not everyone in this world is going to appreciate what you did in their life. You understand? There's some men who will come in these meetings in the ministry at church. You cast out devils out of them and their eyes go up. And tomorrow her eyes are straightened and then she starts backbiting you. Nina boy, I'm going to go on. It had every data thing. Vero Baka. It's a man by the other one. Vero Baka was like a death beat. Some people came like the Vero Baka in ministry. You cast out everything. They turn the guy straight to Burundi. He even now sits back and says, Hey, Vero Baka. 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 Vero but now you don't have the audacity to wait. Oh, Apostle Emma, but I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. Apostle, Apostle Grace, Katia, I got your own name. And his name is Coca Cola. And then someone said, The Lord had told that bullet. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go. So one day I told God, Can I stubbornly demonstrate? And God said, Yes, stubbornly demonstrate. Just to teach the day. So other people also fail because of the little woman. Because so she can also allow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I'm growing. I'm growing. Tell your neighbor I'm growing. I'm growing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Titus chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work and this is most important to speak evil of no man to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men and that's one thing never speak evil of men of god but most importantly your father never speak evil of men but most importantly your father Never sit in a congregation or in any council where a man is speaking evil of your father. Never. Never. If your father ever makes a mistake, there's only one place on the biblical way. Pray for them. Pray for them. So whatever went with prayer in church, how be it now that every time now we hear things in the gospel, Men are blabbing about their fathers. You know? A certain man told me something years ago, and I've used it once or twice. And I'll say it here in the congregation. He said, if you have not yet built a house, you can't judge your father for building a very bad house. You get it? And I found that to be true. What was him and Nyumba? Daddy has bad chairs in the house. God, I can't stand him. Look at his roof. It is even leaking. This man is not serious. The sink 
they always say, the guest is over. Say, doesn't he get ashamed? Never abuse a man about the house he has built when you have not built yours. And that's why I tell people, if any man talks about Pastor Isaiah, he's evil. He deserves to go and build his own house. That's how serious it is. You understand? That is why I need to say that There are certain men who say certain things. And he, he asks me one day, why don't you talk to so and so? I don't even tell him why. But I think he's starting to realize that there are certain people I stopped talking to. The moment they said something that was evil about him, I will never look him and never mala. Never mala. Listen, if you ever see anything evil about the state man of the house, maybe it's time you build your own house. And then after you build your own house, correct from outside, but not from the man's work. Not from the man's work. Not on the man's sermon. No, preach yours outside the jurisdiction of the grace applied and given to function that day. There's a reason as why he's the one on the pulpit, not you. She might be, one time I would send people to university, who would send people, and then someone says, ah, Papa, you sent her someone who is a bit not mature. You understand? And if you go to, through our church history, everyone who ever told me that, that word, I am distant, I am very distant. You never tell how big the distance I draw, but you just realize I never look for you. You get it? Why? Because you cannot say you love me and you don't love my child. I sent her in my name. It doesn't matter how immature. I sent her in my name. It should suffice. It should suffice. You understand what I'm coming from? If he feels that this is the right person to minister, listen, we don't judge men by their levels of maturity. And let me correct you here in Heart of Christ. We send men by their levels of obedience. Always never forget that. We don't send men by the levels of their depth. That's why there are men who are deep and we've never sent them. We're not foolish. And if I've never sent you and you're ministering, you should also ask yourself why I don't look for you. Oh, Pastor Isaiah doesn't look for you. I tell you, he knows you're deep. Hallelujah. You know your what? You did. I'm almost finishing. I'm remaining that two point seven. But there's a reason as to why. Why? Because our places of provision were very simple. The availed vessel should be trusted most. Always remember that. The available vessel should be trusted most. Not the deepest. Never trust the deepest vessel. Trust the most available vessel. I'd rather this cup that I can use to drink when it's available than the best cup that I don't see. Am I clear here? Am I clear here? The available vessel is what you should always use, not the absent one. Hallelujah. Now, if the available vessel finds it too hard for it to be trusted, that's okay, because no leader accepts leadership in the first place. Why? Because it's always bigger than you. You can encourage and inspire them to do it. If they still believe you believe in them, never give up. But if they get to a point where they don't believe what you believe on them, let them go. Get it? If I believe he can teach, and he's teaching funny, but he still believes that he can trust my spirit that I believe on him, I'll invest everything I have until I die. But if I get to a point where he doesn't believe that I had God that he can teach, that one is not yours to teach. Because they doubt the place where you had from. You should never waste your time. Am I clear? And that's when now, almost now to the end, submission becomes a personal entity and the underlying picture from whom you learn. Second Timothy 3.14. I'm about to send a small bomb, but be ready to receive it. Second Timothy 3.14. He says, but continue thou in the things which thou learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou has learned them from. Pastor Zach, Pastor Isaiah. When we get to a point where we must know who we learn from, know your father. It doesn't only mean know what he eats or he drinks, but it's important. 
Because a man can never communicate to you, can never refresh your soul to a level that they ought to if they don't really understand your life. Epaphroditus could not have labored to a place of death if he didn't understand the call of God upon Paul. And that's now the issue with women in marriage and relationships. You get what I'm trying to say? In this world, I'll tell you something. There are people who are preachers, eh? there are people who are teachers, there are people who are pastors, but there are people who are men of God. Now, the little time for men, men of God could be the Hebrew line of Nabi, prophet. Okay? But when you get to the New Testament dispensation of prophecy, it is the spoken word. Now, take heed of people whom the Lord has anointed in the special spoken word or message. And I'm, I'm going to come from there. When a man gets to that life and you realize that their life is different, eh? like some of you, some of these guys you see in church starting to change, the pickers, the who those guys are starting to change, eh? they are getting deep and crazy for the word, and their lives are they start to preach like not what you read on television or anything. Hmm? Don't pray so much to marry such a man if you don't understand the cost of marrying him. Because submission means you're going to have to listen to certain convictions in your spirit that don't agree with a normal form of marriage. If you're not comfortable, you need to look for a teaching doctor and marry him. You'll be okay. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Listen. Look at, look at John Zilek. The, the story tells you John Zilek got to a point where his family could not get next to him because of the anointing on him. There were times he could be out with wife. But John Zilek's wife was just a complimentary place, not a frustrating kind of line. You get what I'm coming from? Not a frustrating kind of line, but a spiritual place. Even though her husband sometimes was not always there, she knew she accepted this man's marriage as ministry to God. So anything that happened between the two of them had nothing to do with emotion. It had everything to do with I am marrying him because I'm the only tag team partner, Paul Barnabas experience, for us to have something in us. That's why when he did healing and then he finished, some people were not healed, he kept them in one room and his wife was prophetic. She prophesied, No, why someone is not healed. She prayed and says, Oh, the Lord has truly forgiven your young brother. And that was a tag team. One time he's praying, Oh God, I want to go to Africa. The Lord tells him to go to Africa. He prays, he's going to tell his wife. He, he's so shaking. He reaches in the bedroom, he tells her, oh, Honey, um, the Lord has. has I don't know how to tell you. No, tell me, no. I don't know how to tell you. No, no, tell me. Okay. No, that's so bad. I said, oh, Africa. She said, ah, you're wasted my time. She had already packed the bag. She told him, you delayed to here. You delayed to here. But we were in a certain couple counseling about two years ago. A man was called from South Africa to work in Kenya. In Kenya. So I said, I ain't going nowhere. Come on. Head. Head is moving and body is saying no. Musa, you're going to go with together. Head is moving and body is saying no. Head, I am going. No, me, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm going. Me, I'm not going. And then the person is like this. I spend days alone. So you ought not to be carnal. And ought not to be carnal doesn't mean that you're super spiritual, you know how to distinguish mysteries. Ought not to be carnal means you understand the assignment. You understand the assignment. For example, when there are people who are in church, because they, they, they attend church, they say they're okay. But there are those people who are there every meeting. The person, the exam, you know those guys? Those ones, I, I, I get microscopes and they look in parallel everything. If any of them comes to mind, I have a boy to tell him to come. Why? Because this one's down the ministry every day. She marries a guy who tells her, don't pray, she can die of pressure. She's that letter. I'm telling you people, I know why I'm saying this thing. Because some of you are going, you're going to see people become crazy. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, go, 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 if you're not comfortable with that kind of man, again, in Heart of Christ, we have these doctors. 
consecrated lawyers, no near you. That's why there. He preaches from age. Okay, I will finish. So the Bible says, knowing from whom you have learned from. Praise the Lord. So again, I say there's a small boom coming, but stand it. One time I asked for the Spirit, what do you mean by whom you learn from? Who you learn from? Okay. Every man can teach you, but you don't learn from every man. You can be humble to hear a man teach you, eh? but you can't learn from every man. Yes. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me. The Spirit told me, how can a man be learned except he be proved? I said, okay. That's why you say that every let every man prove his own work. That he might what? That he might what? Rejoice in his what? In his work. Praise the Lord. Let me get it for you if the guy can see if I have it. Galatians 6, 6 4. He says, But let every man what? Prove his own work and let and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Okay? So I said, Okay. So then how does a man prove himself? That's when the spirit of the Lord told me. He can only prove himself by being approved. Praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter three. I'll prove it. Verse one. Let's read. This is the truth saying. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing. Can we add apostle, evangelist, teacher, pastor? Let's read this, I'll finish. We're going to read long verses, but it's okay. Let's continue. A bishop must be blameless, the husband on one life, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. That means they have the ability to teach, but they also teach them. Next verse. Not given to wine, not striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that will square his own house. I have a problem. When a man can't rule his own house, but he's zealous to rule the house of God. Always takes you. And now that's why I speak to men. If your wife ever fails you, eh? if your wife ever fails you, first go for counseling and seek to put her right. Unless the lines are clear that it is her. But if certain lines point to you, Let's put your house in order. Because the Bible says that your prayers might be heard. You must treat them with honor. If, it, if your wife gets annoyed, even if you pray like how, you're wasting time. And women take advantage of this, by the way. <laughs> mm, let's continue. For if a man know not, are you hearing me? How to rule his own house. How shall we take care of the church of God? You get it? But now this is serious. This is most serious. That's why, that's why, that's why when you get married, when you guys are getting, by the way, this is serious. Do you see how serious this is? Do you know that just this, no house being out of line disqualifies you, even if you have the best forever to that night. You come up again. And the Bible says, not a novice. Teach your baby. This thing lifted up with pride. Why are they lifted up with pride? Because they have gifts. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Next verse. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without least he fall into reproach and then the snare of the devil. So we keep our story, our testimony. Next verse. Likewise, he must be deacon. Now, for some of you, they can't, that's where the bomb is coming now. This is not even a bishop. This is a deacon. Someone who helps in charge. He says the deacon must be great. Not double tongue, not given too much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Next verse. Yes. Mm. Mm. Double tongue. Okay. Amplified. Let's explain it. Amplified. Particular scripture. Let's see the word in English. Okay. In like manner, the deacons must be worthy of respect, not shifty and double talkers, but sincere in what they say. Double tongue people lie, double tongue people manipulate, tongue people speak unstable. 
Praise the Lord. That's why I told people. Some people feel spell bearing, but they are spiritual spell bearers. They are spiritual spell bearers. But that's for another day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the last lines of level, you realize that they are not sincere in what they say. Do you know there are ministers who lie, as in really lie? Someone really holds their false testimony about another. About the testimony. You tell us the eye open, but it's in. Keep quiet. Hallelujah. You keep quiet. Don't tell us it's open that it did it. Because soon you will, when you tell a teacher, you will know you're lying. Hallelujah. Let me shut on my bones. And let all this past be proved. Let them be past proved. Now, you have not been proved. You are also spiritual father. No. Listen. The order is there. Who proved you to be all those things except your spirit authority? Now, you are not even proved at the left. Listen, here is even talking about deacons. Some people are not even deacons in the church, but they are spiritual fathers. Collect insights I had. Even you, you collect bananas. <laughs> so when first time I was hitting this thing, I was thinking this through. Do you realize that these are men's lives? These are men's destiny. Because and first of all, let me first explain this because we are talking to you guys. When I came to Heart of Christ, I had people who were directly submitted to me. I spoke to Pastor Isaiah and he told me, it's okay for the people to submit to you. I sought his attention and approval. You understand? He's my witness to that. Do you get it? But some of you, you just find a kid, my father, Papa, and some of them, amazingly, you find them and they're even excited. This is my son. <laughs> and you look, at, you look at the guy. He doesn't even know the testimony of God in a pure conscience. He can't behold the testimony of God in a pure conscience. So the only conscience is defiled by reason of ignorance. So anything that could be testimony in his life, if you look at the back side of it, it's actually not the testimony of Christ. No, 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 no. It's the influence of an ignorant boy just excited over the things called contrast. He's too excited with contrast that he thinks that that's the testimony of Christ upon him. Maybe it was just like a gift that demonstrated one day. And he said, oh, so my spiritual father. And then he guy says, yes, I'm your spiritual father. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. You first be praised. Tell anybody, you first be praised. You first be praised. Hallelujah. And while I'm still in the heart of Christ, let me declare on that. The approving authority to any of the fathers and pastors is there, not me. Not me. You think you want to father, even if you're my son, go to Pastor Isaiah. He says you can't, our wife. He says you can't because he's the man of the house. I don't determine how many should father in his house. Are we clear? If you feel it's not comfortable, like he says, go and start your own house and father. But as long as you're in this ministry, the only person who has authority, the only person who has authority now. To set the man rolling as a minister. That's why you've never seen me say so and so is a minister. You've never, I've never done that. I've never committed any man and I've never baptized any man in this ministry. Have you not? I'm not a set man. You get on coming, sir? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you do those things, trust me whether you want it or not, you will go. The other one thing I wanted to mention, I'm sorry, I have to mention this in this poem. Don't submit to a man if you don't intend to cut their spirit. Because that's the most important thing to that man. 
not your money, not anything. The most important thing to that man, hmm? you catch this spirit. Because every man reproduces after his own kind. Hallelujah. Always throw yourself in the balances to see how much you have learned. Knowing whom you learn from. Knowing whom you learn from. Knowing whom you learn from. Me, there are many poor people, but I don't learn from all men. Hallelujah. But the one thing I see is that I may catch a man's spirit. Because if I can catch a man's spirit, it means I can learn the way he learns. There are certain teachings that don't come by special mystery in the Bible. They just come by observing certain men. The imitations of the spirit. St. Paul says, imitate me even as I imitate Christ. He didn't say walk like me, because Paul didn't try to walk like Christ. No, he walked Christ. There's a difference. He didn't walk like Christ, he walked Christ. Hallelujah. 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 And if you want to catch a man's spirit, submit to him even in the times, like I say, when you're denied. When things don't work like you wish, if he tells you he wants you at such at midday, be there at midday. Don't ask questions. Just be there at midday. Just be there at midday. Because I'll tell you, this is how I learn not to pastor. Yeah? There are people I can follow up on, but there's a point I stop following up on that pastor. And every time I've observed those people, after the moment I stopped following up on them, I saw judgment in their life. Something happened. I did wish that the judgment should come, but only a place of the grieving spirit on your authority. If your terms and conditions are hard, submit elsewhere, where conditions can work for you. You get it? That's why many of you, when you come to ask for submission, do you realize the word I always tell you? Oh, Pastor Ezra, be available. Period. As in, be there when I need you. Be there when I need you. It is hard for you. Go to ministry where they don't need your availability. Let them also account to God at that level. Praise the Lord. Because what we look to is building guys who know God. Who know God. Praise the Lord Jesus. I've spoken too much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are learning something? Wow. Thank you, Apostle. There are some things that you say. The Bible said in Pastor Zach. I think you need to write a dictionary. <laughs> because I think some people get lost with at definition level. How many of you thought you knew submission? Until today. Hallelujah. Yeah. When it comes to November blessing, they will be surprised at it to be reloaded. Praise the Lord. There's a reason why all this stuff is happening. There is going to be a spread out very soon. There's going to be a demand. I've just been talking to a lady who was telling me she's willing to employ a hundred people from my church. If you came to Denga, you have no job. That you have time. Come Monday, you might be not might, you will. Listen, if you're here and you, 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 you know about mechanics, you're an engineer, you have a diploma, uh, you can deal with air conditioning and fridges and stuff, there is a job waiting for you. There's a job waiting for you, please see me. There are also jobs that I have sent and uh, our church, whatever. So we really want you to be employed. And you want your life to matter. Apostle, thank you for what you shared. I don't think I can share this. <laughs> so in the remaining minutes, um, Pastor Richard is back.
Let me invite him and he get on right away. And then we will see what is the trick. Welcome. Father, we thank you for this time. And we continue to bless you for the word that you send to us. And we send it for our own deliverance. That we may see the goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says that he sends his word and heals them and delivers them from destruction. Now, that is why this kind of level of the word is coming to you. Because God wants to save you from something that you don't know. So, God cannot just save you. He sends a word and in his mind he wants you to log in into that word, catch it and use it, and then become exempted. So that's why people like Apostle Grace are engrossed by God. He defines mysteries that take you to another level in Christendom. Amen? So don't take this training lightly. It is something designed for your empowerment that God will take you to another level in him and also in your secular uh, engagement. I need to briefly talk about something. Yesterday, uh, the other day, I told you that every move of God rests on manpower because the Ark of the Covenant must be carried on the shoulders of men. Not on technology. God came to save Israel from bondage and actually when he came down, he told Moses, I am sending you. So he sent only Moses to liberate the children of Israel. So the mandate was handed over to Moses, and that one else who worked with Moses was empowered to serve Moses. So we talked about the power of trading, focus, faithfulness, and personal management. Give me First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 32. And the children of Issachar, men who had understanding of the time, to know what Israel ought to do, 200 sheep and all their kinsmen were under their command. Give me King James Version. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the time, not that, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. There are two aspects here. They understood the time. Number two, they knew what Israel ought to do in that time. So why are we here? We are here to understand the time and hence understand what we ought to do. So what must you do and when must you do it lies in this empowerment today. And also in the days past. So let's look at John chapter 2 and look at a mystery there, starting from verse 4. So knowing what to do and doing it is what we call prompt response. Everyone say prompt response. Now, at the wedding of Cana in Galilee, they ran out of wine. And the mother of Jesus comes and tells her, you know, tells him there's no wine. And Jesus says to her, my hour, give me the other verse. And Jesus says unto her, woman, what have you to do with me? My hour is not yet come. He understood the time. Continue. His mother said unto the servant, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Continue. Now, when this was noise, uh, no, 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 continue. And they were all 